Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kristen. Welcome to the Zero Calvin channel. Please, have a seat and make yourselves comfortable. The show will begin in just a moment. If you are good and watch to the end, there might even be tea and biscuits. Hey guys, what's up? I just wanted to show you this real fast. This is pretty cool. Um, it's amazing how quickly you can create a character now, uh, especially if you just want to make a background character. So I've been uh, working on this project that requires a bunch of school kids. And uh, I'm probably going to use like a cartoon shader on it so they don't even have to look good. They just have to be people. But even if I just wanted some, even if I do, don't do the um, that style, I may have a bunch in the background that, you know, are a little bit away from the, the camera. So they just need to look passable, right? So it's so easy to do this nowadays, uh, especially with all this computer generated crap going on. Um, if you go to generated.photos, right, you can have all these. These are not real people. They're just spit out from a computer. So you can just specify, I want natural. I want, um, like, say, a female. I want the age. I want a young adult. Um, ethnicity, we'll say we want a white girl. Um, let's say the emotion, we want neutral, because that works best with what I'm going to do next, and a hair length I want short, which should also like keep it out of the face, hopefully. So we hit apply, and we get a bunch of faces, right? So we can pick one that looks suitable or more, right? And uh, we just keep loading in more. If you see one that's kind of sort of like what you want, like say I like um, this one, you can also get more variations of it and just keep clicking on that one until maybe you find one you like. And then you can download it and uh, you know you can buy the a single photo uh, for $2.99 so I grabbed a bunch of characters and uh, I'll just show you how easy it is to deal with these so you open up headshot or you know character creator go to the headshot plugin and I have this lady here say for instance okay so I'm just going to drag her in to headshot but before I do that there's two different modes there's pro and auto so pro is a little more a lot more manual and you and it does up to 4k um, textures auto it says 1k but i think actually now with character creator 4 it does 2k textures but it's funny because it'll even create the hair and stuff like that so i'm just going to drag it over i'm going to say it's a female clean soft profile generate and there we go now it took a few minutes but now we have this character and she looks a lot like her photograph. She actually even looks pretty good in profile and everything, right? <clears throat> I think, the weirdly enough, um, this auto does a lot better than the pro as far as getting the face shape correct. Um, it really does a better job. So I think I may experiment at some time later with um, doing like a hybrid approach where I do it the auto to get the geometry and do the pro to get the 4k textures and then copy the textures over to the uh, this version because um, this definitely does a better job of getting the face shape of matching the face shape even in profile it usually looks a little bit better than what you would get um, out of the pro and you actually get some fake hair which is kind of funny so yeah I created um, I created hair for her. Now it's just like a helmet head, obviously. It's nothing <laughs> nothing great looking. But uh, you know, if you're doing background characters, it looks fine, right? It's just hair. Um, it even does longer hairstyles, believe it or not, um, which I can show you. But pretty nice. Um, so let's do let's just continue now. So um, let's fix her body. Let's because this is a full womanly body and we probably don't want that. So what we're going to do is um, we'll go to the morphs. And if you do, do currently used, interestingly enough, it doesn't show any, even though actually the uh, default female morph is dialed in 100% right now. So if you were to go to um, full body and find the 
um, the neutral female base, right? We do minus 100. That's actually the generic neutral body that uh, that comes out. So you can di always dial this back and then dial in different uh, a different body style if you want. Um, I'm actually just going to dial this back by 50%. Just to make it <clears throat> a little less womanly and then um, let's see and I think I'll do body thin a little bit of body thin and then uh, the character height she's pretty tall right now so um, we just do height, character heights. Now, character height's kind of backwards. The higher number makes her shorter. So there we go. Now she's got a different body. We could give her a different pose if we wanted. Let's just do our, our uh, regular female standing pose. Now, the only thing we might want to do is um, get rid of this hair and give her some new hair and some new eyebrows along with it. Boop. And there we go. And that's how easy it's been for me to create a character. And then, of course, I just go and um, slap on some clothes on her. I've been, I created a uniform that I brought over from Daz Studio for each of the genders. So I can just give her the shoes. And the skirt. And the shirt, which actually has the shirt, the vest, and the little bow tie on it. Give her the bra. Done. Boom. <laughs> Got herself a, cu a custom character from a generated photo from AI. Pretty cool, huh? So in case you're wondering what I'm doing with all these, um, I've been making uh, a bunch of kids for a classroom scene. So I have um, an iClone. I have this classroom. I brought this over from a Daz set, and I've been kind of setting it up. Um, it's kind of a set up like a Japanese school classroom uh, that you would typically see in an anime. I mean, they're almost always, always set up like this, where the teacher's here, they enter in from over here, and the protagonist always seems to sit in the back by the windows. You know, usually back along here. Um, I think the reason I do that is because they can, you know, uh, whenever they're, the character's doing his thing in the classroom, they don't have to draw all the other ca the characters. Because if they were sitting, say, in this desk, you'd have to draw all of these. And for that same reason, I'm, my story had actually taken place and specifically been in, like, a, this seat here. So my main character is going to be sitting here and the secondary character is going to be here. But there are a couple of um, mentions in my short story where there's, um, you know, a bunch of kids that keep staring at our main character. So I need to be able to populate enough of these desks to make it look, you know, believable that there's a classroom full of kids. And I can always, of course, you know, narrow in the camera and stuff like that. So if I were to go to my camera. Um, so right now I have a pretty wide at 35, so I could narrow it in, you know, when I'm doing my character, showing my character. Um, to just kind of limit it to, a, you know, so many desks. Um, as it is, I already thinned them out quite a bit. I thinned out every other row and I may thin out like every other seat here too, something like that. I'm not sure. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's the idea uh, is just uh, I want to make a um, just some still renders for a short story that I, I've already create like read out the audio for the short story. Um, I just want to kind of create like a slideshow. Whoops. Yeah, so the idea is I have the short story and I, I've already actually narrated it. It's only a couple pages, you know. So I narrated it and I just want to create either stills or maybe stills and a few sh very quick animations uh, to go along with it and create that as a YouTube video and upload that for Halloween. And it pretty much all takes place in a classroom. There is um, a couple of scenes that take place uh, at the main character's home, basically him just watching TV, eating dinner, and then sleeping in bed. So um, probably have to chuck him in a home, but I have a couple different home studio things, so that's fine. Um, yeah, anyway, that's <laughs> that's what I've been working on this October is creating a little bunch of kids. So this is Sally. She's she's actually more the main character than the main character, I would say. So I spent the most time on her. I'm actually not sure which one I'm going to use for the male lead yet. I may have to make a bespoke model for him. It all depends on... Um, ooh which one I use and which rendering style I use. Um, you know, because I could do something like a um, tune shader. Uh, well, it looks like crap with the way it's set up by default, it looks like crap. But um, yeah, there's a tune shader I can turn on and get a pretty interesting looking tune effect. But or I could use the real-time render engine like I'm using here and just mess around with it to make it look reasonable, which I may do. Or I can do an iRay render and really go crazy. So I'm not quite sure which to go about. The iRay rendering might be a little difficult just because of my scene lighting. It's indoors and all my scene lights are um, just these... Um, tubes that are emissive lights. So I have that plus my um, the HDRI, which I'm using for uh, my image-based lighting, which is outside. So um, iRay would take a little while, I think, and not be grainy since it's using basically mesh lights, which are kind of always noisy. Um, anyway, so that's it. <laughs> that's what I've been working on. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.